Welcome to another webinar at Nine Arts. This is how to optimize your art budget and maximize ROI. Now, whether you're a developer or you're just curious about art within the built environment uh, as it relates to real estate development, well, you're in the right place. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm your host, Keith Hitchcock, Digital Content Manager at Nine Arts, and I want to introduce our special guest, our, uh, Andrea Berry. This is Director of Client Success at Nine Dot Arts. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Keith. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us today. Really looking forward to getting to talk with you on this exciting and important topic. Andrea is the uh, star of the show today, um, but there is another person behind the scenes helping out, uh, maybe answer some questions that you might have um, or give you other assistant or maybe drop in some other links to uh, resources that could be helpful for you. That's Olivia. And thank you for being here behind the scenes as moderator. So uh, this is what you're in for today. These are some of our primary takeaways as we look at this. Uh, things like the benefit of uh, benefits of early art integration, um, uh, how to elevate your guest experience through strategic artwork, artwork placement, value of working, the value of working with an art consultant in the first place, um, and how all this impacts your hotel's ROI. Um, let's see. So our agenda today is pretty simple. After a, a few more. Um, intro comments and um, housekeeping. We will dive into uh, what is art curation, art art consult, art cons consultation, um, and then our three main sections of our webinar, including a budget walkthrough, kind of giving you samples of like what what's a lower budget, a medium budget, a higher end budget, um, and then of course we'll have uh, time for your questions. So at any point, if you're new to, you shouldn't be new to Zoom at this point. Um, in in our uh, history uh, of the world, but if you are, there's a little question window for you to engage with and an audio window for you. Feel free to put a question into that window at any point um, that the question occurs, and we will have that uh, dedicated time to get to as many questions as we can. So with that, I want to hand it over to Andrea just to talk about, well, what is art curation and consultation and who is Nine Dot Arts, Andrea? Great, thanks, Keith. So, Nine Dot Arts is really a creative placemaking firm. So, we do art curation and consultation for developers and um, clients across multiple verticals from hospitality to multifamily, senior living, um, all the way to municipalities and large scale um, urban developments that are involving public private partnerships. Uh, we here are headquartered out of Denver um, and we have for over a little over a year now, an office in Seattle and a soon to be opening office in Atlanta. Um, our history really encompasses about 900 projects over 36 states and five countries. And um, the other side of our business is something that we call Dotfolio. And what Dotfolio is, is it's a free platform that allows artists to log on create a profile and upload their, upload their portfolio. And that uh, becomes one of our, uh, one of the many research tools that our curatorial team uses for their curation and consultation. And as of right now, we have about 10,000 artists on that database with over 100,000 works of art. Moving on to really what does an art consultancy do? Um, we're really functioning as a member of your placemaking team. We will work collaboratively with public and private partners. So everyone from developers, architects, interior designers uh, to city officials to really understand the vision of your project, your brand story, and how we wanna communicate that visually. So the architecture and interior design of a project do a great job of inferring that brand story. And then the art brings a great opportunity to tell the story. Um, and we'll work with you really from project conception and visioning all the way to uh, delivery, installation, and audio audience engagement. So a lot of people ask, how does an art consulting and curating firm work? So in our experience, we've been doing this for about 12 years. We have a, a tried and proven uh, four-stage process. 
Um, and that starts with the vision and roadmap. And really what that is, is we put together um, an interactive visioning session with all of the project stakeholders. Um, and then we synthesize uh, the information that is um, curated during that session into what we call our project roadmap. And that roadmap is inclusive of art goals and criteria, curatorial statements, concept and mood board, art locations, uh, budget allocations, and uh, project milestone schedule. This really becomes the North Star for the art collection and all decisions made about the art collection will kind of root back to this initial document. From there, we go into research and curate, and that's exactly what it sounds like. We are researching and digging into the appropriate artists as defined by the project roadmap, as well as really digging into uh, their portfolios. And we are coming up with the art collections for the team to review. And then we're determining of the collection, what's going to be existing artwork versus what's gonna be commissioned works. Um, once those art collections are approved, we move into acquisition and that's where we're purchasing artwork or we are kicking off the commission process. And then we wrap everything up with the installation and uh, audio, audience engagement phase. That's making sure that everything is installed correctly, meeting code, is engineer, engineering and structurally sound, and then really executing on um, any engagement and activation activities that have been programmed. And then throughout this entire process, um, our team or an art consultant in general is offering a comprehensive project management to really give you um, peace of mind and ensure that we are making the highest and best use of everyone's time. Awesome. That is a uh, very helpful setting the stage of what art curation, uh, consulting and placemaking is all about. Um, I wanted to mention before we dive into the main content is that we will be spicing uh, some of the deck that you're about to see with some stats and quotes from the state of the art report. Um, this is something that uh, we actually commissioned. We surveyed a bunch of business leaders across many different industries as it relates to art uh, and development about how art impacts uh, projects in the built environment. Um, I think um, uh, Olivia may be dropping a link to that. If, if you want to uh, check that out, dig into it any deeper, there are a lot of, lot of insights that uh, we think are quite helpful. With that, Andrea, I'm going to let you take it away as you dive into uh, talking about how to optimize your art budget. Sounds great. Thanks again, Keith. So before we get started, we really want to acknowledge the current state of the industry that we're in. We're all seeing soaring construction and material costs, supply chain issues, and labor shortages, not to mention um, much longer project financing timelines. That all being said, we are seeing the projects are still moving forward. And really after the state of the world that we've been living in for the last two, two and a half years, we're really seeing even more so than before that people are hungry for experiences. And this desire is informing how people are prioritizing how they spend their time and spend their money. So hospitality is really taking advantage and driving on this trend. Um, but we're seeing this, uh, this crossover into other verticals as well, especially the multifamily, including uh, senior housing, um, corporate office, mixed use, and the public spaces. Um, there is, because of that, there's a strong desire to create this amenity-rich, authentic, and memorable place that people want to live, work, and play in. So this is really creating an immense opportunity for our hospitality owners and um, partners, operators, to really help set the trend and lead the industry to raise the bar on developing impactful places that are really providing memorable experiences for visitors, guests, employees, and anyone else that's going to be enjoying the space. And art is playing a huge role in that creative placemaking process. So that brings us to the topic of the day. How do we optimize our existing art budget while maximizing um, ROI? So I'm going to walk you through four important points to execute on this. So our first point is to start planning early. I cannot stress how important this is. If we don't know where we're gonna go, we are never gonna get there. We are hearing from clients across the board how important it is to establishing to establish their team early, bring them along together with a shared vision throughout the entire pro pro project life cycle. This is including the art consultant. Um, and really 
bringing an art consultant on early doesn't mean that you're going to be spending more money on art or the consulting services, but it does mean that we're going to be making very efficient time, use of time and money with regards to communication, collaboration, and the overall project process. Um, and the art, as I mentioned, does not have to be all expensive art, but it does need to be thoughtfully and intentionally planned and programmed to ensure overall cohesion with the interior design, architecture, and overall brand story. That takes some time. Um, ideally, we recommend engaging an art consultant at 60% schematic design. Um, this allows the art program to inform the construction drawings, again, ensuring that the design, architecture, and the art collection are moving forward together. This is really going to eliminate expensive and time-intensive change orders down the road um, and really make sure that all the structural lighting and sometimes even plumbing elements are in place from the beginning um, so that we're not limited on choices um, later on uh, down the road in the project. Uh, this is also going to contribute to creating spaces that allow for site-specific design, bold, and iconic artwork that makes sense only for that space and really would be impossible to execute on anywhere else. Um, and not only does getting started early streamline the communication, planning, and workflow, some other benefits um, include us being able to ensure the best pricing and avoiding rush charges, and also leveraging the, the approved and planned collection throughout your project life cycle. So the key takeaway here is that when considered early and curated with intention, art is going to increase the ROI of your hospitality project and really create an unforgettable guest experience. Case in point, the hand, as it's often referred to, was started at 60% schematic design. So installation at this scale required early planning and collaboration on structural requirements as well as lighting design plans. That sculpture is not light and we needed to ensure that uh, we had all of the, the beams in place uh, required to hold that and that the, the piece was going to be lighted appropriately. Um, because of this early planning and being able to execute on an iconic installation of this scale, this recognizable icon has become a meeting place for visitors. And then once they say, meet me under the hand, they'll actually stay and enjoy all the nearby offerings of the food and beverage and retail. Um, and the sculpture has become a staple now in the Denver art scene. Um, it's a must see for visitors and uh, was actually uh, the most Instagrammable location for guests, or I'm sorry, Instagrammable location in Denver for guests and visitors um, in 2020. So um, in addition to starting early, uh, the next point I wanna talk about is um, focusing on high impact areas. So given that art and culture are gonna shape the experiences uh, for your guests and visitors, we really want to prioritize those first impression areas. These are the areas that are going to create that sense of arrival um, to your property. So these might be the exterior facade, the entry, uh, moments that are really telling your guests and visitors that they've arrived somewhere special. Um, additional high impact areas would be the lobby, reception, check-in desk, as well as a lobby located bar or lounge. Um, and really the key to maximizing your budget within these spaces is understanding how much traffic is gonna be passing through. So it's pretty, pretty easy to figure out the more guests and visitors that are interacting with a space and a piece that elevates the priority that that location becomes and uh, the amount of budget that we wanna allocate towards those locations. And likewise, areas that are getting less traffic, they may drop down on the priority list. For example, at the Doubletree in Austin, when you walk into the lobby lounge, the first thing you'll see are these amazing portraits of famous Texas musicians that set the stage and really the vibe for the hotel visit that leaves an unforgettable impression. The art collection is really celebrating the creativity, the music, and the quirkiness of Austin's uh, DNA. We've all heard the slogan, uh, keep Austin weird. Um, that was used to celebrate and promote small and local businesses. So similarly, other high traffic areas that we located art in um, 
impactful art are the bar and the ballroom. These works really leave a great first and lasting impression that's authentic to the property and also uh, celebrating Austin's vibrant art and culture scene. This brings us to our next topic of enhancing community spaces. So really when we're thinking about enhancing community spaces, let's think about where the community building locations are within your project. These can include areas such as the lounge, rooftop, co-working spaces, or exterior break areas. These areas uh, should be next on the budgetary list for prioritizing authentic artwork to really elevate and create that memorable experience. Art and culture are really driving forces for storytelling and community building, and the common public spaces in your project are the optimal location to tell, uh, to tell these stories. So where are people gonna be hanging out? Where are they gonna be meeting for happy hour, uh, meeting a colleague? Um, these are, these locate, using iconic artwork in these locations can really build, become a backdrop for innovative and creative conversations. Another thing to consider when optimizing your budget is that a smaller number of iconic pieces are gonna be much more impactful than a larger number of ho-hum pieces. So the key takeaway there would be, um, if your budget is limited, let's allocate a little bit more of your budget to a smaller number of high impact pieces. And that's gonna be much more effective for creating that brand story. Uh, case in point here, uh, Spring Hill Suites in San Diego. So we've got some great high impact art located in all the key conversation areas. So looking at that vibrant jellyfish mural, um, that creates an amazing backdrop for conversation around the fire, uh, checking out a bike or going into uh, that the shop to check out beach gear for a day and then encouraging people to, to hang out longer. Likewise, in the lobby, we've got the octopus tentacle sculpture. That's really sparking curiosity and conversation around guests as they're waiting to check in, waiting for um, the rest of their party to meet and, and go off on the day's adventure. So we've talked about some of these ideas. So the big question now is how do we establish a budget prioritize these key locations and select the right artwork to accomplish our goals. So the answer to that is you really want to partner with an expert. So just as you're going to hire an architect or interior designer, adding an art consultant partner to your team is going to produce tried and proven results. So the benefits of this kind of partnership are um, we're going to do it right the first time, especially as I mentioned with the state of the industry right now, nobody has time to do it wrong and absolutely nobody has time to have to do it twice. Um, there's also the opportunity of leveraging existing relationships and access to the creative community that you might not have otherwise. And also connections with preferred partners, vendors, and, and getting that associated pricing. So ultimately, what I'm trying to get at here is you don't know what you don't know. And coordinating the curation, installation of an impactful art collection is a lot more than just knowing a great artist. So an art consultant team is going to do the heavy lifting by bringing in a team of experts to do what they do best and allow the rest of the team to focus on what they do best. And finally, you have the benefit of a creative, innovative thinking process and a team of specialists that can execute on that vision. And a great example of this is the Perry Lane Hotel in Savannah. So by bringing our, uh, our Nine Dot Arts team in, uh, we had the innovative approach to develop a fictional character. Uh, she was a Southern Grand Dame named Adelaide, Adelaide Harcourt, and she was the inspiration for the hotel's art experience. So the art collection was curated to have a collected over time feel as it came from Adelaide's uh, family heirlooms and mementos from all of her travel. And that was coupled with some contemporary art to really complement the lavish and luxurious design and architecture of the project and emanate the feel of old Savannah while trying to also give the feel of staying in, in someone's home, someone's nice old Savannah home. Um, our team was also able to take advantage of um, the proximity to the Savannah College of Art and Design to help develop the collection. 
this is another opportunity and benefit that um, bringing on an art partner can do. They can really engage with and connect and uplift the local community. Um, and by bringing in these collaborations, that really allows you to kind of reflect the native values, ideas, and stories of an area while reinvesting dollars and resources into the local and neighboring creative economies. So again, a team of specialists um, were brought in. Um, you can see everyone that was partaking in this project uh, listed on the slide here, but they were brought in to really execute on this um, innovative vision from curation, innovation, or sorry, installation, um, the strategic approach, engagements, and uh, ongoing activations. For example, we've got um, the Savannah College of Art and Design come and do, they do drawing studios uh, in, the, in the bar, um, live artist talks, um, so on and so forth. And so executing on leveraging a team really makes the highest and best use of everyone else on the team's time because a consultant knows how to navigate this process efficiently through their experience and um, industry expertise. So we've gone through kind of these four, four key points of um, maximizing or optimizing our budget. So now we're going to talk a little bit about maximizing our return on investment. That's a question that we get a lot. How can I tell that this collection is working for me? How can I tell that the money I'm spending is, is going to be worth it? Um, so really uh, partnering with these with your with experts, so an art consultant partner is going to help you develop a standout art experience um, through many ways. So the first way that we're going to talk about is gaining that all encompassing valuable earned media. When people want to spend time and money at your hotel, they're going to tell their friends and talk about it through various channels. So, you know, the various social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, you're going to get that earned media and noteworthy press um, through that word of mouth buzz. Um, and you'll also get attention from industry and, and local influencers kind of talking about your space and, and then generating more people uh, to come visit. Uh, we've got a great example here in Denver. Uh, it's the Catbird Rhino. Um, we've got this awesome sculpture of a rhinoceros, Wilma, as she has been named. She's strategically placed outside the property and at the entry of uh, the Rhino Arts District, which is a highly trafficked area here in Denver. Um, this sculpture welcomes people to both the hotel and the neighborhood, and it's serving as a landmark installation and a perfect Instagram backdrop. She's already made her way, she's only been installed for a few months, and she's already made her way into numerous social media posts, again, garnering that earned media and word of mouth marketing. Um, and what does earned media do for your project? If you're not familiar, earned media is really going to allow you to charge because of the demand and interest, going to allow you to charge higher rates, um, get longer bookings, and really just an overall revenue boost. People may come to check out your noteworthy artwork, and then they're going to stay and have dinner or have happy hour, tell their friends, recommend the hotel um, for an out-of-town guest to stay at, so on and so forth. Um, and really by identifying this location at the hotel as a high impact location, we helped our clients create that exceptional first and lasting impression um, for guests and visitors that, again, make them want to talk about, talk about the project, talk about the, the location, talk about the work, and want to come back and see it again. Additionally, art's going to create a backdrop for community events that can generate additional earned media and revenue while locating why, I'm sorry, why engaging the local community. So in addition to having out of town visitors, hospitality owners and developers have the opportunity to create spaces where locals want to be in order to boost their return on investment benefits. Um, and by doing this, you can honor the local community culture and offer something fresh and new. Um, you can do this by leveraging local artists. And the value of leveraging local artists is that they can interpret and express the local vibe in modern and unexpected ways that excite and resonate with people. So just as you might ask a concierge, where do I get the best burger in town? Where's the best gallery to go see? Local creatives know best how to represent their community. 
These artists know how to capture what's special about a specific place that is going to entice locals and not just those out-of-town visitors to enjoy the property and even think of it as you know, a destination within their own city and think about it with pride. And by using art to activate a space, it also becomes a powerful backdrop to conversation, idea sharing, and connection amongst employees, customers, and the community. And again, as I mentioned with Perry Lane, it's also offering a wonderful way to reinvest in the local community and build goodwill, which also equates to good press towards the project. Um, a great example of execution on this is the Clayton Club in Denver. This is um, a hotel and a social club that was built on inclusivity and celebrated, that inclusivity was and diversity was celebrated through the art collection. Um, this art collection was curated through a community partnership and collaboration with a local arts organization. And one of the really exciting results of this was that these selected artists that are featured in the project were also invited to join the social club. Um, and in lieu of paying membership fees, uh, they are contributing to the programming through their artworks and events. So doing artist talks and lectures, um, again, activations. So it was a great way um, to really bring in a wonderful mix of, of people into this project. So the next thing we want to talk about is really elevating that guest experience. So we talked about this industry trend of everybody wanting these memorable experiences. When you're budgeting strategically for the high impact art, this is contributing to that memorable experience um, and, and really making the guests want to come back. This is also going to help you differentiate your project as being uniquely yours. Um, and, and again, um, rising to the top of the list when, when somebody is looking at your property versus another and trying to determine where, where they want to stay. And this artwork is going to help with, um, you know, in part with all of the other amazing design elements that your architect and interior design have brought to really give guests something to remember that they can't wait to experience again. So this is evidenced here in uh, Le Meridian and the AC Marriott project. This was really the first um, dual global dual branded luxury lifestyle development um, with that Marriott and Starwood brought to really create um, an unforgettable experience. We're representing two archetypes here. One is a mid-century Spanish man that is featured at the AC Marriott. He's masculine, he's bold. And then Le Meridian is a sophisticated French woman who is romantic and refined. So when guests stay at either of these properties, they have the opportunity to take tours of the art collection at both properties um, and really kind of have a gallery experience um, at the hotel that they're staying at. And this property was awarded the best new hotel art display by Westward and really has established Denver and the property as a sought after international uh, destination. So moving on from there, let's talk about attracting some of this repeat business that we've touched on briefly. Um, when you're creating these really amazing experiences, guests want to, they want to visit again. They tell their friends, then their friends come, they want to visit again. What does that mean for you on the ROI side? That means you're getting repeat bookings, you're expanding your brand awareness and your customer loyalty. Um, and the guests will want to come and see their favorite artwork. They'll want to come back and see it again. Again, they're going to be talking about it. And then having this increased traffic is then also going to boost revenue for your hotel's food and beverage program, as well as any um, retail pop-ups or other, other types of um, spaces that you, revenue generating spaces that you've got um, installed there. Um, and this is really an example of how the art collection is going to keep working for you long after installation is complete. And that's something really that I like to focus on um, as heading up our client success division is really how do we get you the biggest bang for your buck on your art collection and how do we make sure that it's that it continues to work for you. Um, so another so great example of this is uh, what we did at the Blackstone Hotel in Chicago. Um, they were actually renovating this project and really wanted to use the art collection to establish the hotel as a cultural icon because it was kind of starting to become forgotten. 
I mean, special details like the fact that Al Capone got his hair cut there, or it was once the site of a famous jazz lounge. Um, they were used to interpret the history through like a new creative lens. And by doing that, we created a vibrant energy and a cheeky sense of humor um, that really kind of gave an homage to the past um, with a nod toward the present and the future. And because it, divide, it defies convention, it kind of the preconception of what this hotel might be or what might be contained inside, um, it keeps guests coming back and wanting to see what's happening, what's new, and has reaffirmed the property as a cultural destination for visitors and locals. So as a recap, we've talked about optimizing our budget. We've talked about ideas on how to maximize your return on investment. So now I wanna walk through a real life example of how um, all of these ideas and concepts have been put into practice. So using um, a real life example of a project, we're gonna kind of show you what you could get through kind of a low, medium and high tier budget. So a couple of things I want you to remember is a low, medium and high tier budget are gonna be different for each property. And even with a small budget, we can still make a big impact. Again, to what I mentioned at the beginning, we can get started early to really think about creative and innovative ways to use the budget that you have, really identify where those priority locations are going to be. Um, and then, and that's really our role as an art consultant or your art partner. That's that's their role on, on the team is to ensure that for, for you. Um, and something else I want you to keep in mind is like a baseline budget for an art program. We like to recommend thinking about one half of 1% of the overall construction budget. And then we can kind of move up and down from there based on the goals and criteria for the project. So that said, we're gonna look at three, three budget tiers, the essential tier, the elevated tier, and the exceptional tier. So the project that we're going to use for this exercise is the Perry Lane project featured a little bit earlier. Um, something to note, this project did have an exceptional budget, but if it did not have an exceptional budget, this is how we would have approached the work. So if we were looking at the Perry Lane project with an essential budget, we would begin by looking at our highest impact areas, which for this project was the lobby. This is the first impression area where everyone coming to the hotel as a guest or a visitor is going to experience. So this is where we would focus the bulk of our budget on really generating an amazing first impression and sense of arrival. Now, if we're gonna move on to an enriched budget and add a little bit more um, to the program, um, we're going to expand on what we did with the lot in the lobby with the essential budget. And then we're going to look at some of those community spaces that I mentioned before, where people are going to interact, engage, meet with friends and colleagues. And those are really going to be, um, they're going to be spending time in the rooftop bar and then also gathering at uh, the elevator. Anyone staying at the hotel has got to take the elevator. So there's going to be a relatively good amount of traffic there. And so that's where we would focus the next level of this budget. And then uh, moving on up to the exceptional, uh, adding on to what we've done with the, uh, with the essential and enriched, um, we're now going to look at areas that we can really invoke um, areas of surprise and delight throughout the hotel and really reinforce that brand story. If you remember, we have Adelaide, Har Adelaide Harcourt, our grand dame, and so really wanting to expand the story of this being you know, a reflection of her life. Uh, we would focus additional funds and art locations in the corridors, the guest rooms, in styling throughout the hotel, and then just adding those little elements of surprise and delight, or some people like to call them Easter eggs, um, throughout the hotel. So you may not notice them the first time you go through, and then the second time you do, and then visitors want to say, oh, well, what else haven't I seen? So this, as I mentioned, this approach is really going to add to the details of the story that we're trying to tell. Um, and it's those unexpected moments that are really going to add to the memorability of, of the project. People might not remember the specific details, but they will remember the story or something that surprised and delighted them. 
So in conclusion, we've discussed today the importance of leveraging your existing budget to provide the most impact and value for your project. And when this is done co correctly, it becomes noticed and talked about not only by your guests and visitors, but by industry organizations and media. For example, an internationally acclaimed travel publication recently ranked several of our projects in the top hotels in the world list, uh, mentioning the art collections as an amenity, and uh, specifically in our headquartered hometown of Denver, all five hotels that were on that list were projects that featured Nine Dot Arts curated collections. So with that, I will uh, turn it back to Keith and uh, we'll open it up for some question and answers. All right. Well, first of all, first off, Andrea, that was an amazing uh, presentation. I always learn a lot when I talk to you and, and uh, have conversations with you. So thank you so much for that. I'm sure questions are coming up for attendees right now. So um, whatever questions are popping into your mind, go ahead and feel free to put that into um, the Q&A box there. Just pop that little icon, the Q&A icon. That'll pop out the, uh, the Q&A section just put your questions in there we do have um, some questions that were pre-submitted or submitted at registration um, along with questions coming in so i'm just going to dive in andrea and start asking you the these and we will get to as many of these as we can in the the rest of the, of the time that we have together so first <laughs> first off if you're ready uh, is why do you suggest starting at 60% schematic design? So 60, excuse me, 60% 60 mm -hmm. schematic design is really the ideal time to engage an art consultant because there's still room and time to make some modifications. So if we determine that we wanna hang an iconic sculpture or we wanna do um, a wall installation that needs specific lighting or um, a, a, an installation that's gonna require water and plumbing, at 60% schematic design, there's still time for us to uh, make these changes without impacting the budget. So we can help inform those construction drawings and um, eliminate any costly or timely change orders later, or maybe even saying this, even though we really wanna do this type of project, we're too far down the road and, and, it's, and it's off the table now. So it keeps, it keeps our options open, keeps us from being limited and, um, helps us uh, plan early and smartly. Awesome, okay, next question. Uh, what is needed to create an art budget? So here at Nine Dot Arts, we work with um, creating budgets in a couple of different ways. Sometimes um, you've already got a line item and um, budget allocated for art. So you can come to us um, or any, any art consultant partner and say, we have X amount of money. Um, to apply towards this collection. And then we will work with you and kind of reverse engineer um, to ensure that you're getting the biggest bang for your buck um, with what you have. Um, the, other, the other way that we work is we'll take a look at your plans with you and your design team and identify those key primary, secondary, and sometimes tertiary locations. And we'll make budget recommendations of what we think you should spend based on the size of your project. I mentioned earlier, um, we roughly start with a baseline of one half of 1%. And then again, based on the scope and scale of the project, the criteria, um, the numbers kind of move up and down from there. Um, and thirdly, sometimes we will just get started with a visioning session, that stage one that I mentioned in the process. Um, that's a much smaller fee to get started, but we, it allows us to dig into the project with your team, hone in on those key priority locations and identify what artwork type or typology that's going to be. Um, and then and then we can, as part of that visioning and roadmap stage, we can flesh out your budget from for you from there. Awesome. Okay. Still related to, to budget and hiring uh, an art consultant, here's a question that's, that is, what's included when you hire an art consultant? So, you know, there's a lot of different art consultants or sometimes they're, they're called art vendors out there. Um, so I'm gonna talk specifically to Nine Dot Arts because um, I believe we offer the full suite of services or a comprehensive solution. So when you hire a team like ours, um, you're getting 
the uh, creative expertise of a curatorial team. You are getting um, uh, a client success expert that has a lot of knowledge around the real estate development process and the industry trends. You're getting project specialists that focus in acquiring art and managing commissions. You're getting somebody that has construction background and um, can oversee all of the installation, coordination with the engineering team. And then throughout an, the entire process, you're getting comprehensive project management, project administration, consulting, advising. Um, you're getting creative consulting and marketing consulting on how to, um, again, really make sure that this art collection is working for you, um, not only from a design standpoint, but also from a PR standpoint, from a community engagement and public outreach standpoint, marketing and, and PR efforts, um, as well as supporting your pre-leasing and um, pre-sales process. So it's, again, it's a, it's a full suite of services um, that you get throughout your, your project life cycle and really an art partner from your project conception through delivery. Great, all right, we'll keep those questions coming. We have time for uh, at least a few more here. Um, these, uh, I, I combine, I'm gonna combine a couple of questions that came in um, that I think are related. It's uh, how do you choose an artist for your space? Do you find them or do they find you? Um, and someone else wrote in best access to lo local art. So I guess wondering about how to find local artists. Can you speak to sure. that? Sure, absolutely. So um, we will start with, um, again, that visioning session. So really understanding what our client, um, you as our client and the design partners, what you're going for. Um, and I did mention at the beginning our uh, Dotfolio art platform. And so typically we'll start there just because we have such a large number of artists and artworks in, in that database. So again, um, you know, most projects are really are really wanting local art, but then depending on some of those projects, they also want to bring in some national and international names. So we will start with that um, with that database, but then it kind of expands organically uh, through that um, through our artists in that database. We uh, we have collections or connections to the local kind of creative collective in the different areas and different markets that we work in. And then by researching their websites, there's usually links to other websites. We'll go on Instagram, um, follow links and references through there. So it really kind of um, expands organically, uh, again, based on the market, the type of art and the artist. Um, and then to answer the part of, do we find them or do they find us? It's kind of both. So again, we start with that database. So they may have come to us, and said, here's my work, I work in this market, you know, please consider me. Or through that kind of organic expansion of research, we may come across them. Um, we also do a lot of gallery visits and um, stay connected with those gallery owners and other local arts organizations in the markets that we work in. Um, so there's a, a to, in a nutshell, there's a lot of different avenues that we take um, to make sure that we're getting the best fit for the project. Um, and then we also like to leverage, um, you know, partnerships with local other local arts organizations and universities. We have several projects where we've featured student and professor art um, to create either permanent or rotating art exhibits. So we'll really explore all the different options for you and present them as the, and to the team so that we can kind of make a decision on the direction that we want to take together. Great. And... Uh... If if you were an artist and you think that you're not yet on Nine Dot Arts radar, um, Olivia dropped the the URL to check out, um, and it's I highly recommend you just engaging there, uploading your portfolio, just to to let us know um, that you're interested in potentially working with us. So. And I will add really quick, Keith, in yep. addition to drop up, being able to upload your portfolio and your profile, there's also a plethora of useful resources like what to expect during a commission process, how to price print reproductions, so on and so forth. And we will be continuing to add to that library. So it's a great ongoing resource um, for artists and the artist community as well. Great. Okay, here's an interesting question. Well, they're all interesting, but who normally hires the art consultant? Is it the hotel developer, the architect, someone else? 
Oh, great. That's a great question. So this is um, typically it's the developer or the owner that will hire the art consultant and that's who the contract will be held with. Um, that being said, sometimes the architect or interior designer will be kind of a referral. They will bring, they will either bring the owner and operator to us or bring us to them um, as, as, as a recommendation of we've worked with this team in the past, um, they do a great job, but um, ultimately the best solution is to have the art partner contracting directly with the owner because they are the end client and that eliminates any kind of conflict of interest with um, design direction and, and decision making. Awesome. Okay. I think we have time for one more question here. If we didn't get to your question, we'll be we do our best to, to get back to you with an answer. Um, thanks for all these great, great questions, by the way. And last question is, how do you address a public art requirement? Okay, so maybe to start, um, let's talk about what a public art requirement is. More and more cities are starting to um, require new development within um, the city boundary or and sometimes even adjacent boundaries to um, commit 1% of the project budget to public art. So we're seeing that a lot in cities like Seattle. Um, we've got it outside of Denver in Aurora, San Francisco, um, so on and so forth. So how we typically would do that is we would work with the client to establish exactly what that budget would be. And then we want to identify what those key high impact priority locations are for the public art. Now, it's important to remember that anything that is being funded under a public art requirement has to be visible and accessible to the public, meaning it can't be in an amenity space or like in a, in a kind of Court, you know, enclosed courtyard that not everybody has access to. To be considered public art, anyone has to be able to um, be able to engage and enjoy it at any time. And then, typically through that process, we'll engage with um, the design team, with the owner. And then, in a lot of cities, there is some sort of art commission that has um, a stake in this as well, and and needs to have approval. Sometimes art committees are needed to be formed. So we have a lot of experience working with this, and um, we can guide you through the process, and um, and really take the lead on making sure that we're using the right artists. We've got the right locations. We're um, engaging with the the local arts commissions and making sure that we've built consensus around all the interest groups as well as the local community and any other um, public interest groups that would have a say in the artwork and uh, and and bring everyone along in the process together uh, through installation and ensure that we're meeting all of the goals uh, for for the program. Awesome. With that, we will begin to bring things to a close. I want to thank everyone for attending today. Um, Andrea, thank you so much for presenting today. I learned so much. My pleasure. Awesome. And uh, we're always uh, interested and available to continue the conversation at Let's Talk at 9.arts.com. Um, we're also on social media over on LinkedIn and Instagram. We're having some fun uh, conversations at 9.arts. Um, there's some links for you there that Olivia just dropped in there. And uh, there's going to be a survey that comes up on your window after we close. Uh, so take a moment to engage with that. Otherwise, we'll hope to see you on another webinar. And uh, thanks again. See you next time.